Welcome to Nevada, where it is still hot as can be, but it is totally worth it because we are driving the all-new Can-Am Maverick R. I want to show you a bunch of the cool things that didn't get covered in some of the other things that we've read and seen. Then I'm going to give you five things I love, five things I hate, and I'm going to tell you exactly who I think this rig is for. Stay tuned. This is one of the best rigs we've had our hands on this year. You don't want to miss it. So let's start outside. Early photos of this thing, everybody thought, well, that's a weird looking rig. In the flesh, it is super attractive. The tall knuckles give it a super distinctive front profile. See it coming down the trail, those big arms moving up and down. Very cool. Big old three piston calipers up up front, two pistons in the rear, another tall knuckle in the back, big old cargo bay. Look at that. Center up exhaust just like before. Thing looks proper gnarly from the rear. These ITP Tenacity tires have taken an absolute beating today. We did over 100 miles doing every bit of 99 miles an hour in multiple occasions. Occasionally cruising along 75, 80 like it's absolutely nothing. These things took an absolute beating. So obviously it's an ultimate class rig. This is way ahead of anything that you'd see from like a Razor 1000 or a Can-Am Maverick X3. You've got 240 horsepower. You can carry speed like you would not believe. That Fox suspension smooths everything out. So you don't even realize you're doing 80 miles an hour most of the time. All of that means you're going to need a cage that can stand up to a genuine beating. Can-Am has provided that. Let's take a good close look at this cage. Look at these gussets. Look at that sucker massive. Another double plate back here holding everything together. Pretty impressive stuff. Good and stout. That's what we like to see. While we're outside, let's take a look at these full doors. Forever Can-Am has had half doors. You run through the dust, run through the mud, wind up getting it on you. No more. And you get an exterior door handle. Still get the same uh, pull in here. Big grip if you like that on the passenger side. Super nice. These seats are four-way adjustable like they said. However, some of those adjustments can only be done with tools which means uh, you need to get everything set up ahead of time. Not super easy to hop in and out, change things for multiple drivers. You will have to excuse the mess in here. It has been a dirty, dusty day all day long. Check out these super cool buttons for all the suspension adjustment. You've got multiple ways to do that, right? You can do it all down here. You can do it by pushing these buttons on the steering wheel. You can also go into the touch screen and pull up all of your controls in here. So they come up over there. That's pretty cool. We like that. Something else we haven't seen up close and personal, this huge rear snorkel that brings in cold air for the engine. Super cool, super big. If you do wind up putting a windshield on your rig and wind up blocking that sucker off, Can-Am sells as part of the windshield kit a big roof-mounted scoop that sits up there and draws clean air in. Of course, some of the biggest news is the engine. Big 240 horsepower, turbocharged, 1,000 cc, inline, triple. It's super cool, sounds super great, and it's got anti-lag in Sport Plus mode that sharpens this rig up in a way I wish I could convey it. You know, we've, we've played with sport modes on all sorts of rigs from, from Honda Talons to KRXs. Nothing that we have had our hands on changes the personality of the rig quite like Sport Plus mode on this thing. The acceleration is instantaneous because they are basically shutting down a cylinder, using that cylinder to pump consistently when you're off the throttle to spin up the turbo to make sure that there is zero lag. It sounds like a freaking rally car and it feels like one too. Let's take a listen. All right, so we're gonna start the rig up. We're in sport mode now. Sport mode idles at about 1700, 1800 RPM. Go over here to, boop, go down to normal. Idle drops down, much more calm, shifts much lower. Sport, back up to 1800. Got Sport Plus. All right, so that's some of the cool stuff, but that's not what you came here for. You came for five things we love, five things we hate, so let's get at it. First thing we love is that engine. Power 
everywhere. This is a turbocharged inline three cylinder, which means it takes a little bit more to get going, but once it is going, it is blisteringly fast. And I do mean bananas fast. Part of that is the 240 horsepower. Part of it is the second thing we love, which is the dual clutch transmission. By this point, a dual clutch transmission is nothing new in a side-by-side. Han has been doing it for years in the Talon. This is completely different. I, I don't really have the words to tell you how much better this is than a Honda Talon. Number one, the fuel mapping is superb. It's super smooth, super easy. I can't wait to get this thing out to the rocks and see just how easy it is to control. It feels like you have all the control of the CVT with all of the immediacy of a gear-driven transmission. It is super, super nice. And of course, you get high and low on-demand shift on the fly. No more having to come to a complete stop to shift into low gear. You can just bump the shifter back, it'll drop into low gear, or if you're in low gear, bump the shifter back, it'll go into high gear, and away you go. You get high and low in all seven gears. It's pretty amazing how low first gear is in high. Drop that down into low, and it's an absolute creeper. It's really solid. While we're talking about the transmission, let's talk about this shifter. Super super nice, super premium feeling, nicer than just about anything else that we've had our hands on, including the new Ranger XD 1500. This is just super intuitive to use. You know, you've got park down here, you've got low, you've got neutral, but you really don't have to look down here to find lower high, like I was saying. You just bump this thing in and you're either in low or high. That easy. Reverse. Same thing, super nice. The third thing we love, and I cannot believe I am saying this, this massive touchscreen. This thing is super slick, super responsive. It's nicer than just about anything else that we've seen on a side-by-side -side by far. You can configure it however you want. You've got front and rear cameras over here. You've got vehicle statistics over here. You've got various controls. It can be split screen. It can be single screen. It's all really, really nice. The only thing I would say, it's nice over here. I wish it was over here, sort of, you know, in front of the driver. But uh, hey, it's a first step. It's one of the best screens that we've seen on any rig anywhere. It's great. Now for the obvious question. The suspension. Is it good? Well, that is the fourth thing that I love about this rig. Man, I, I cannot tell you how brutal the terrain was out here today. We're out running two different race courses today that were just hammered from a recent race. This thing did not give up an inch. You know, the Pro R was, was light years ahead of anything else that we'd seen on a sport side-by-side. -side. This turns up the wick yet again. This tall knuckle, as goofy as it looks, it makes a difference. This thing feels incredibly planted. It is amazing to watch those arms articulate as you're ripping through some really, really gnarly terrain, and it soaks everything up. I mean, G-outs that would have sent our 2019 Maverick X3 XRS Turbo RR just into the scrap pile, this thing soaked up like it did not care. Look, this is going to sound like hyperbole, but I have never driven anything this good off-road. It keeps all four wheels on the ground at all times unless you were doing some truly, truly gnarly stuff. And I'm talking hit a jump at 90 miles an hour stuff. You know, we were railing through some sand, uh, sand washes earlier and you could feel the outside load up so that you had more traction coming in. You know, part of it is it's, it's wide. At 77 inches wide, it's the widest side-by-side -side we've ever had our hands on. And it does not feel tippy in the way that we are so accustomed to from so many side-by-sides. This feels like a performance car. This feels like a WRC racer. You know, years and years ago, I got to drive around in a true rally Subaru. <laughs> I think this thing handles better. How about the fifth thing we love? We're going to go with tires, wheels and tires. I cannot tell you how much of a difference having 32-inch tires on this rig makes when it comes to tackling obstacles. We were running part of the Vegas Torino and... <laughs> At one part, we were in, in a, just a, a truly gnarly river wash. Uh, big steps, big washouts from all the rain they had recently. This thing did not care. Uh, we bottomed it out exactly once, and we were doing every bit of 60 miles an hour. The thing just soaked it up, did not care, and that's partly because it has the rolling diameter to do that. Before we go any farther, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Doing so will mean that you get to see our freshest content before anyone else. It's also a 
huge help to us. It lets our bosses know we should keep doing stuff just like this. All right, let's get back to it. Now for five things we hate, and we're gonna start off with Can-Am's new navigation system. It's a phone-based application. Look, that's always tough to execute, right? You've got different people with different phones. You've got connectivity issues. You know, we started our, our drive today with a really, really long involved attempt to get ours set up and working. We eventually had to give up and just follow the person in front of us. The problem there is there are no maps built into the system. You have to have a phone attached to it, and that's just not great. It doesn't work for a lot of people. If you find your, there, there aren't even basic maps, right? So if you find yourself out in the desert, out in the woods and you get turned around, you can't even use it like you would a paper map to say, ah, well, I just crossed this creek here and I remember crossing that mountain a little while back. So we're probably in that area. It just, it's, it's just not very useful. And it's a bummer because you have this huge screen that you could use for that. So when you go over here to navigation, you click on navigation and it says, well, you gotta have the app. But even when we had the app going, it just, it couldn't locate us. We just had a map of the earth and uh, turns out that's not super helpful for navigating. So that's thing number one. We're gonna stay inside for thing number two. Can-Am has made a lot of noise about how much they have improved this interior. And there are places where this thing feels nicer than any other side by side on the market. That screen feels excellent. The shifter feels amazing. The switches also feel amazing. Unfortunately, there's a lot of old Can-Am in here too. Fit and finish issues, left, right, and center, you know, big gaps, things that don't line up. When you're ripping down a trail, all of that stuff flies at your head. You just don't care. But when you're sitting here looking at it in your garage, knowing that you plunked out the better part of $40,000 for it, and it looks like this, that's tough. So let's take a look at what I mean. So this <laughs> is front and center in the cab here. That's just how that comes. Over here, we've got uh, panels that don't don't quite line up. That's not that's not super skookum. Uh, more importantly, you've got this gauge cluster here that sort of rocks back and forth and your paddle shifters are attached to that. It just feels loose. The entire steering wheel sort of moves up and down. That's not ideal. Yeah, we're gonna stay inside for thing number three and that is storage or I should be more specific, lack thereof. There just isn't a lot of storage on here. Let me show you around. You've got one cubby up here you know, with outlets, place to place to stick your phone, all that. You've got one glove box, can't quite fit a bottle of water in there, definitely can't fit a Nalgene in there. You've got two cup holders, and that's it. You know, for a rig that can do every bit of 99 miles an hour and has 13 gallons of fuel capacity, you need more storage. Yeah, they'll sell you accessories for the link system in the back to throw all sorts of cubbies and things on the back, but you can't reach those things inside. You gotta stop and get out. I wanna see more watertight storage inside the cab. The fourth thing we hate, rear visibility. So this is the engine scoop. This is what brings in fresh air to the engine. It looks super cool. Unfortunately, it makes that rear view mirror nearly useless. You know, Can-Ams have never been super easy to see out of. This isn't anything new. It does have a backup camera, which is great, but you get it muddy, you get it dusty, you can't see anything that's a bummer. And yeah, we're gonna stay inside for the fifth and last thing that we hate inside, and that is the actual gauge cluster itself. Not the big touchscreen. The big touchscreen is beautiful, but right next door, you've got something that looks like it was ripped right out of a base Maverick. Let's take a look. Here's the base screen in all her glory. You can see that. Lights up orange, just like you're used to. Old LCD looking screen, you know, Meanwhile, you look over here and you've got this beautiful TFT touchscreen display right next to this. Mm. It just feels off in a machine that is this nice and this sorted everywhere else. Now, I know what you're thinking, Zach. What about the price? That thing is crazy expensive. Shouldn't that be on the list of things you hate about the Maverick R? And the answer is no. And I'll tell you why. There is only one other rig on the planet that can keep pace with this thing on the trails that we were running this week. That's the Pro R. You can forget about your Raptor. You can forget about your TRX. You can forget about your Aerial Atom Nomad. None of those will keep pace with this thing. 
all of those will easily ratchet up over the $70,000 price that this thing can be optioned up to. So is it worth the money? Yeah. Look, before I got into playing with these things for a living, I spent a lot of time working for Road and & Track and I drove some really crazy machines. I'm talking McLaren F1s, I'm talking Porsche 911 turbos, Lamborghini Aventador Rs, you name it. I don't think any of those machines can hold a candle to this one in terms of performance per dollar. We spent two days cruising at between 75 and 99 miles an hour on some truly technical, truly gnarly terrain. This thing ate it up, didn't blink the entire time. For a rig that starts around 36 grand by the time you get it home, what more do you want? Yeah, it's expensive for a side-by-side. -side. It's not expensive for what you can do with it. Which brings us to who should buy this rig? If you live out here in the wilds of the West and don't think you need one of these things, I got news for you. You might want to update your Christmas list because this thing rocks. It makes seeing your public lands deeply fun. You need three or four of your buddies to get one, go play around in the sticks in the weekend. Or if you're an amateur racer or ever thought about getting into amateur racing, this is a great platform to do it with because it is tough as nails. Finally, that brings us to, is this the Pro R killer that Can-Am promised? That's a tough question. It really is. I think that if you already own a Pro R, you're probably not going to sell it to go grab a Maverick R. The Pro R is an incredibly potent machine. It is tough as nails. It will do anything and everything the Mav R will do. That said, if you're looking at both of them, do I buy a Pro R? Do I buy a Maverick R? It would be hard for me to steer away from the Maverick R. And that comes down to one simple thing, no CVT. I know everybody loves a CVT, but this thing provides power immediately. The fact that you can manually shift it to your heart's desire is excellent. All of those traits put this thing slightly ahead of the Pro R. Yeah, the Pro R has ride command. It's a way better navigation system, especially if you're out on a group ride. Yeah, the Pro R's interior may be slightly nicer. I'll tell you what you're not thinking about when you're ripping across the desert at 90 miles an hour, any of that. Anyway, I hope you like this closer look at the Mav R. Be sure to check us out at UTV Driver. We've got fresh news, reviews, videos five days a week. Uh, we'll see you there. Wow.